Hello all, I am Vishu Gupta, a PhD student under the supervision of Dr. Shreda Sivasambhu at CSR IGIB Delhi. So uh, today we will be talking about the methods and techniques that are involved in the detection of the pharmacogenomic genetic variations. So uh, just to briefly revise. Uh, we have already understood that pharmacogenomics is the study of a person's genetic makeup and, in, and its effect on the therapeutic interventions that are given to that individual or to a specific population or a set of people. So, there could be a scenario in which an individual receiving a drug could show no toxicity to certain drugs or a very good uh, efficacy to certain drugs. However, the uh, another individual uh, being given the same drug could show reverse effects and there could be an individual who could be showing moderate reaction to this to that drug so uh, we it is very important to study the genetic basis which is leading to the differences in the reactions to that specific drug so there are several studies which are which could be undertaken like if a person uh, is given certain drug and he or she reacts to it then uh, the genomic <clears throat> testing or the genetic testing of that individual could be undertaken. There is another class of study in which there is a population and that population could be segregated into two groups. One, the control group who are not displaying the phenotype. Other one could be the cases group in which the phenotype is being shown. Then using this uh, division, we can then see the frequency of certain variants and determine that which group shows frequency uh, shows higher or lower frequency of certain variant. For example, uh, if there is a gene X and there is a variant Y, we could see that uh, and it is leading to some specific phenotype. And we if we find that the frequency of that variant is quite high in case of uh, the cases group as compared to the control, then we can say that that variant or that gene is associated with that uh, phenotype. So these type of studies are known as genome wide association studies, which could be uh, like which could be undertaken to understand the common polymorphisms which are involved in case of the pharma pharmacogenetic responses uh, in a population. So uh, there are now several several methods and several techniques which could be used to uh, perform the genetic testing or the GWAS studies for the uh, detection of the PGX variations. So here are the here are some examples of uh, such techniques. For example, Sanger sequencing, mass spectrometry based uh, genotyping, or array based uh, genotyping, or uh, we can perform the next generation sequencing also. So uh, here we will be talking about each and every technique and the principle behind these techniques in further slides. So here are certain uh, brands or certain uh, proprietary names with which these techniques are available. So, uh, for example, in case of array-based SNP genotyping, there are two different uh, groups. Uh, this is one kit, which is uh, DMET array by Ephemetrix, which is specific to certain genes, which are pharmacogenomic genes. The probes for that, those genes are only present in that chip. However, for global screening assay by Lumina, there are uh, whole genome-based probes are present. Now, first of all, moving on to uh, the Sanger sequencing. So, uh, in case of Sanger, a specific region of interest is first amplified using PCR. So, while performing the PCR, there is a specific type of modified uh, nucleotides that are added to the reaction. Uh, so, these nucleotides are known as dideoxynucleotides and these nucleotides lack the 3' OH group which is essential for making the phosphodiester bond uh, with the other base and uh, thus this chain is then terminated whenever these nucleotides are incorporated. So these modified or uh, fluoro uh, like uh, dideoxynucleotides with fluorophores different colors are uh, put into the PCR reaction and upon the reaction there are uh, fragments which are op labeled fragments which are obtained which which are of different lengths because um, as the chain progresses, the different nucleotides are added and hence different fragment lengths, uh, different fragment, uh, fragments of different lengths are produced. Now, uh, to identify these fragments, uh, capillary gel electrophoresis is carried out and then uh, as uh, we analyze the result in the form of chromatogram. So here we can see that each color depicts single base 
and by using this chromatogram we can easily read the sequence of the uh, targeted region hence identifying the variation that is present in that individual and also we could uh, we could uh, very well identify the genotype whether it is in homozygous heterozygous or wild type uh, homozygous form so <clears throat> the other technique that is widely used is mass spectrometry so this technique uh, detects the variants uh, or the different alleles on the basis of the mass suppose we have two alleles of a gene with two different variants uh, one is uh, having uh, a to t and other allele has this a being converted to c or this t being uh, converted to g so after this uh, first of all we will perform a pcr encompassing these uh, this region of interest then these pcr products will be undergoing uh, the sap treatment in which the unincorporated nucleotides uh, will be removed by uh, using the alkaline phosphatase enzyme that is sap and after this uh, these pcr products are taken and then there is the, there is a specific reaction that takes place which is known as the single base extension reaction in which the primers are added to the reaction which are just uh, which bind to the uh, target dna target pcr product just one base upstream of the uh, uh, of the base of interest or the uh, variant okay so these nucleo these primers will bind just one base upstream and then there are certain terminator nucleotides as we have seen in case of sanger also so uh, these terminator nucleotides are then added which are fluorescently labeled uh, differentially fluorescently labeled and then uh, when the pcr uh, like another pcr happens and when this extension occurs these uh, dideoxynucleotides are added and as we can see here if we have two different alleles two different extension products will be formed and if the individual would have a single allele single extension product would be formed similarly if the uh, individual has another uh, like variant single allele then that could be a uh, single uh, variant allele would be formed now after this um, these extension products are then uh, like put into like uh, desalted and then dispensed into an array plate followed by uh, uh, followed by putting the plate in the mass spectrometer and then followed by analysis so here we can see that uh, the, there are two peaks which are corresponding to each of the alleles so these alleles are being distinguished on the basis of their mass similarly a um, uh, lot of other variants or alleles could be uh, uh, could be identified using mass spectrometry now uh, moving on to the uh, another very well Uh, utilized technique for pharmacogenomic for identification of the pharmacogenomic variants that is snp genotyping based on the arrays now uh, in this process the first of all the genomic dna is uh, taken uh, and the amplification of the whole genomic dna is uh, done followed by the fragmentation of the dna into small fragments now these fragmented dna are then loaded onto specialized chips like uh, these are specialized bead chips in which there are small small silica beads which are present and each of this bead contains a probe like as we can see in this figure there is a probe uh, which is attached to that bead now when the uh, when the target dna or the dna which in which we need to detect the variation comes and it binds to the probe in such a way that it binds just one base upstream of the variant of interest or the uh, like the region or the base of interest so after this uh, again single base extension occurs and then uh, the corresponding base which is uh, fluorescently labeled is uh, like added to the probe now when this is added to the probe and put into the uh, like machine that machine produces a image which contains like for each of this probes like these this image shows each of the silica beads at circles and there are probes so the as uh, i have discussed earlier these probes could be uh, into two categories these these could be of specific genes or these probes could be of the whole genome so uh, in this uh, image we can see that if only one uh, colored 
कलर्ड सिग्नल इज ऑप्टेन दैट मीन बोथ द एलिज कंटेन द सेम बेस और मे बी द वाइल टाइप बेस हाई एवर इफ देर आर टू टू डिफरेंट टू डिफरेंट सिग्नल्स और देर इज अ मिक्सचर ऑफ रेड एंड ग्रीन सिग्नल देन इट कुड बी सीन एज अ येल्लो सिग्नल विच से दैट या द इंडिविजुअल इज हेड्रोजाइगस और द इंडिविजुअल इज कैरिंग बोथ द एलिज फॉर दैट स्पेसिफिक प्रो or that for uh, for that specific region of interest okay similarly if only green is present that uh, shows that only the variant allele is present in homozygous uh, state so uh, by using this chip the data is analyzed and uh, the information about variants uh, maybe in the pharmacogenomic specifically pharmacogenomic genes or genome wide could be captured along with the genotype like whether the variant is in homozygous form or is it in heterozygous form so um, now however there is a limitation that snp genotyping does not cover uh, like maybe whole of the genome only the pro the region for which the probes are present on the chip uh, will be covered so um, there are there are high chances that novel variations could be missed during uh, the while we perform snp genotyping and also the cnvs that is the copy number variants could be missed in case of uh, this uh, snp genotyping using array based uh, uh, using array based so overcome this limitation currently uh, next generation sequencing which is a very high throughput massively pa uh, parallel technique to sequence the entire or uh, like maybe the desired region of the genetic material is used so uh, uh, in this technique uh, like the, a sample is taken the dna is extracted from that sample followed by the denaturation of the dna and library preparation of the dna so during the prepare uh, during the library preparation step uh, the uh, each of the dna or each of the uh, individuals uh, sample is given a specific label that is known as the adapter which are unique barcodes for each of the sample now all these samples are then loaded onto a glass slide which is uh, known as flow cell if we talk about the illumina platform so uh, these are loaded onto that glass slide and then amp cluster amplification followed by the sequencing by synthesis uh, occurs so during sequencing by synthesis each uh, like each base is added complementary to uh, the sequence that is added and that each base is read by the machine as a colored signal so this is then uh, this data is then captured analyzed and we can clearly see where in the variants in the in which of the genes the variants are present so uh, these are few techniques which are uh, widely used for uh, a detection of pharmacogenomic variants there are several other techniques which could be used like which are generally used that are uh, that is the tacman uh, rt pcr based technique also uh, in earlier days pcr rflp could be utilized for uh, detection of the variant so if we look at uh, the type of next generation sequencing there are around uh, these are the types of next generation sequencing uh, one is first of all there is a candidate gene panel in this there is a there, uh, the sequencing of of a panel of selected genes is taken place in this uh, candidate gene panel however uh, it has limitations that novel genes or novel variations could not be identified uh, only novel variations in the known genes could be identified so uh, to overcome this limitation whole exome sequencing is could be performed in which uh, all the protein coding genes in a human dna are sequenced and variations uh, in those genes either novel or uh, known could be captured and reported however there is a limitation that variations in non coding part of the gene which is the major uh, major part of our genome could be missed in case of whole exome sequencing now to uh, overcome this limitation uh, whole genome sequencing uh, is there for which uh, in which whole genome or the uh, non coding part of the variation is also um included and novel genes and novel variations in uh, 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 could be detected using whole genome sequencing 
now if we look at the uh, techniques and see look at the comparison of the techniques so uh, so here is a table showing uh, the different techniques and the uh, comparison between those techniques so as we can see that there are like basically there are two different uh, two different steps for any technique one is to discriminate the two allele and the other is to detect the alleles uh, which are uh, there so uh, different techniques like for example sanger sequencing uses allele discrimination method uh, to be chain termination and uh, similarly it, uh, the allele detection method for sanger sequencing in gel electrophoresis however for mass spectrometry is molecular weight and so on uh, also there are advantages and limitations of each of these techniques and so we have to uh, choose the correct technique wisely and also take care um, take, take care of the cost and the uh, cost and the time that is taken to perform each of the techniques so thank you for listening to the talk